think our hustle culture loves to try and speed up the pace at which we live. We think that by pushing ourselves harder, we'll be better in some way. And I think it's unfortunate because it seems now that we think that pushing children faster down the path to adulthood at earlier and earlier ages is going to somehow help them become more capable adults. But I think the opposite is true. Just like good sleep can't be pushed, the same holds true with childhood. There's something magical that happens to children when we can protect childhood as sacred. What if an unhurried childhood was absolutely essential to raising emotionally healthy adults who are equipped to handle the world's problems with grace and emotional agility? That's why I intentionally choose to slow down and savor my adult life. I'm leaning into it, and I hope that this video can give you some more practical, easy tips to start embracing slow living as a parent too. Here are just a bunch of ways that I embrace slow living with my kids. Number one is really small daily, I'm gonna call them rituals. For example, for me, I'm usually the first one up and I will often go for a walk or um, prepare breakfast, turn on some music, and then when my kids come out, if I am listening to a podcast, then I turn it off. Whatever I'm doing, I stop and we like have this moment together. This sounds so simple, I know. As hectic as the day gets, I can always think back on it and I feel it adds a sense of peace and calmness and like predictability to our day. It's just a reminder that you do have the space and time to do little things like this. The next way that I would recommend embracing slow living with your kids is to quit an extracurricular. I know this one's again kind of controversial and you know your kids better than me. However, I think there's this like very common fear put into our culture, especially pointed towards mothers that like we're not doing enough and our kids aren't doing enough and we need to give them more, sign them up for more, buy them more, even like put more in their lunchbox. Like it's never ending the, the more. And the problem is like, you don't know when you've arrived. So I feel like every parent can tell. I mean, I can tell when I'm just like had too much. There's too much on my plate. There's too much sensory overload. There's too much stuff in my house. Like, and I just need a break. I think it's such a gift we can give our children to be like, yeah, buddy, I'm gonna gift you this moment in your childhood. Have time to putz around the yard and like look at a caterpillar for an hour. And I think we lose that when we're involved every night in extracurriculars and uh, you know, rushing from one activity then to the next and there's no time for outdoor play that's just free with no strings attached. Maybe you could just find one that might really clear your schedule and the chaos from your life to just find a little more time in your week to do nothing. I am all about simple everyday self-care practices. For me, an everyday thing I do is drink tea. And one of my very favorite teas is Peak. And that is why I'm so excited to be partnering with Peak on today's video. As you can see, I have a ton of different tea flavors in here that I don't know why, but this makes me so happy. I have all these different tea flavors so that when I wake up in the morning, I can just like pick the one that sounds the best and then have it. Most of the time though, I make matcha. Their Sun Goddess Matcha Tea and the BT Fountain Beauty Electrolyte make up what they call the Radiant Skin Duo. Two delicious daily hydrating drinks for lasting radiance. The combination of antioxidants and electrolytes have become a go-to for my self-care and skincare. I don't really get into skin products or uh, like facials or things like that. I really prioritize my health and wellness and beauty with what I eat and drink. And for me, I feel like tea is a large part of my overall skin health and just hormone health in general. They're having a special right now where if you sign up for their subscription, you get 20% off in a free beaker and frother. Thank you again to Peak. Make yourself some tea, let's get back to the video. The next way to slow down with your kids is just to acknowledge feelings rather than fighting them. This has been a very powerful thing in our home and I'm no expert, I'm just a mom that's very passionate about uh, my own mental health. So I've been through lots of therapy and counseling and I've read lots of books like Emotionally Healthy Spirituality and I'm really into Rye, which I don't know if many of you are into it, but I feel like if you're into slow living and like you're trying to be gentle towards yourself, then there's definitely 
there's got to be like a propensity towards being gentle towards your children and so um yeah if you've never heard of like respectful parenting i feel like magda gerber is like the she's like the maria montessori of respectful respecting children like this movement to treat young people with respect there are other like definitely experienced teachers in this field like janet lansbury and like my friend friend caitlin at the mellow mama so there's just wonderful resources out there but as we've kind of tried this in our own home it's honestly like a tool to reparent yourself and regulate yourself and it's not just a tool to use with children um, it's a tool to use with yourself to normalize emotions and kind of get used to the fact that like big emotions come and if we can just allow them and acknowledge them they also go um, whether or not we acknowledge them or allow them or not like we go through these ups and downs in a day we're not all down and we're not all high and the more I think we can allow ourselves and trust our children to go to the depths and come back and keep that experience respectful and all we need to do is like acknowledge them allow them trust them and I think there's an extent to which I'm not a perfect parent like I get frustrated and I say things I regret but um, like allowing this humanness to exist and not feeling like we need to fix everything I think we need to provide safety and in doing this though I do feel like we all feel more safe and seen in our home certainly for me it's a way that I enjoy parenting so much more the next one is one that like I've just started doing recently because I feel like my kids are not toddlers or like super young anymore like they're kids now and so recently I made like a list of all my favorite childhood memories and I just decided that like every now and then I'm gonna just try to recreate them for my children and like sometimes they're just an epic fail like recently I tried to set up a stargazing night because that's one of my own favorite childhood memories is like my dad setting up child or like stargazing nights in our yard or like if there was like a really cool um cool what is it called when when there's like a lot of shooting stars <laughs> asteroid asteroids anywhere if there was like something really cool going on with the stars my dad would like wake us up in the night and carry us outside and he would have like a blanket and pillows and stuff set up and like you know it would be like two in the morning and he would get us up and like make sure we got to see it and I just like have such good memories of like sitting there with my brother and watching the stars and like yeah I tried to do that or <laughs> with my husband to do that for the kids and like literally no matter what we did neither of the kids woke up like <laughs> they have no memory of it but it's just fun like it makes parenting feel like oh this is what I waited for like these are the experiences I wanted to have and not just like flying through the mundane tasks of keeping little humans alive. The next one is just to put on some nice music. Sometimes I'm tempted and I'm very proud of myself. It's been a long time since my kids have watched like any screens at all. But sometimes I'm tempted because I'm just like tired or you know it's like that middle of the day slump and I'm sometimes tempted to put on like some type of movie or show and instead I just put on nice music and I feel like it's incredible what it does to the energy of our home and even like kind of makes my kids slow down because they want to listen to it especially if it's like music they really like it's just like a little thing that i think you can do to slow down with your kids and maybe opt for instead of putting on a screen we control the ambiance and like the way our home feels to be in it and i think that that's like a really cool special thing that we bring to the table so think about it like when you're in your home how does it feel how do you want it to feel and what elements like could you add without buying more stuff to make it feel cozy if you're like me like I love for my home to feel cozy I like to think about the textures and the tones and the music like that makes me feel good and so um, yeah I'm conscious to like pretty much always have my windows open because I think fresh air feels good and I like to have like nice background music on and I actually have a bunch of playlists. I'll just link them for you. I like house plants. Just little things that like make your home feel like a woman lives here. Like there's there's an amount of like hominess and peacefulness to this place. And that is something that I think maybe is a little bit lost in our modern age. That you can set the ambiance. Setting the ambiance. There you go. Okay, the next way that I embrace slow living with my kids is planting 
little packs of seeds together, like planting a seed packet. My kids, like, they freak out. They get so excited about, like, the prospect of planting new seeds. So it's just become something we do, like, every couple weeks. And on the day we do it, I feel like we just spend the whole day outside. I'd, like, you'll start with the pack of seeds, and then it just turns into the next thing. You're digging in the dirt, and then you're playing with the water, and then, at least with my kids' ages right now, like, it just becomes a whole thing. And then all of a sudden, they're deep in play in the garden, and it's just, like, so nice. And it all starts with just, like, planting a little seed. And over the course of time, it's really incredible that I always think like, man, the right day to plant a seed is like today because then you get to see the seed grow and turn into a plant and then the kids can check it out and bugs come and it turns into this whole thing that costs like $2 and you get like a whole season's worth of like just opportunities to connect with nature right in your backyard with your kids for basically free. The next way that I intentionally embrace slow living with my kids is watching either the sunset or the sunrise together. I don't like put pressure on myself to make sure we do this every day, but when I notice it, I make a point to enjoy it and be like, whoa, look at the color. Even if I don't know the answers, like sit there and like ask questions. Like I wonder why that color is happening tonight and didn't happen last night or like, you know, just like get lost in the awe and wonder for a minute every day. Even in our little suburban backyard, I think it's so cool that we get to see that type of thing every day. And yeah, it happens every day, but how often do I miss it? Because I'm just too busy with some like little thing and um, the more that I'm just like, oh my gosh, the sunrise is happening or the sunset. It's like so exciting and it's become like something special that happens every day. And when my kids see it now, they run out, they're like, mom! the sunrise or the sunset it's happening come here and then we all just like run out and watch it and it's just like such a high point in my day the next one is kind of similar but it is to pick a favorite nature location like think about the places in nature that you just really love and take your kids and go visit it spend some time outdoors with your kids it's good for you, it's good for them. It's just like such a great way to connect with whatever the season is. All my favorite memories pretty much with my kids are of us doing things outside in nature. Pick a favorite childhood chapter book of yours that is just gonna be like a very nostalgic and positive experience for you and read it out loud to your kids. My kids love Little House on the Prairie books. They also really love Magic Tree House books, which I, my, I have memories of my mom reading to me and it, like it's just like such a, lovely experience reading to them and they're finally the age where they're like really into the stories and usually I make a snack and we sit on the couch and we just read books together. The next thing that I love doing with my kids that's definitely a way we slow down is handcrafts. My kids are like really into sewing right now. I think it was a while ago now. It was sometime in the winter we made like a, like a big chunky finger knitted blanket together and that was really fun. It's something that it just kind of is grounding. It's a very grounding experience. Okay, so those are all the ways that I practice slow living with my kids. I don't know if this is part three or part four, but I will link all the other videos that I've made about slow living with kids so that hopefully at some point I have just like this big inventory of videos to help support you as um, you kind of like look towards lowering your stress and enjoying your life more as a mother. I always pray that my videos bring hope to whoever's watching them, so I'd love to hear from you in the comments if that was the case. Until next time, take care.